Hi and welcome back to my greenhouse. Um, I just thought I would uh, show you my technique for rooting uh, the Penthes cuttings. Um, now there's lots of videos online on how to do this um, and what I've done is I've, I watched one a while ago and I sort of adapted it um, and it worked quite well for me so I thought I'd share the technique with you. Um, so this is a piece of uh, my Nepenthes uh, Linda which is a cross. Uh, it's a really nice uh, Nepenthes. Um, it's quite happy growing in the house. It produces traps that are sort of only up to sort of nine inches tall, if not a bit bigger. Um, but it does grow quite vigorously and so this is a piece of uh, one of the uh, main vining pieces that's now about, well it was about a metre and a bit tall. Um, so I've taken off about you know three quarters of a metre of this. Um, so what I'm going to do with this is that um, I'm going to divide this up. Uh, I'm going to basically then pot it up and take these cuttings. Now usually what I do is I take cuttings at uh, one or two leaves, or two or three leaves. So you know you want a nice long bit of stem. Uh, we're going to cut it just above uh, the the previous leaf joint. Then sort of count one, two leaves, and then cut it again, and then a couple of leaves, cut it again. So out of this piece, I'm probably going to make about six, maybe seven cuttings. So if I just start off, um, like I said, this is a technique I uh, use that's worked quite well. I mean, I get um, sort of rooting rates of probably 80% or more, so I'm quite, quite happy with it. Um, and it doesn't actually cost a great deal to actually do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just clean off the end here. Um, nice part, sharp pair of secateurs there. And then I will basically cut two up. I'll try and leave as much as I can um, above uh, or, or below the next leaf. So there's plenty to actually go in the ground and start rooting from. Now, usually when these things root, they will root from uh, within the leaf node there. Or so not root. Uh, they will actually sprout new growth from within the leaf node. Um, usually at the bottom one, but sometimes at the top one. Um, it's easier if it's at the bottom. That's okay. But yeah, the top's all right. Um, so if I cut this one off about here, there's still room for it to uh, actually sprout out above that. So I'll just put this out of the way. So there's a nice piece. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to shorten uh, some of the leaves a bit. Um, we don't want the tendrils on here, they actually get in the way when uh, we're actually trying to keep them somewhere to root. So I'm just going to shorten them a bit. Um, some people shorten them sort of halfway. Um, I'm happy to just do it to about that much. Um, it just doesn't get in the way. I mean, these will quite often die back um, and actually quite often die back completely, but then it'll still sprout. Um, I mean, sometimes I've actually had bits of brown stem. When I've been doing this, you quite often find that uh, between leaves, um, the Nepenthes have got, uh, Alatra particularly, um, the stem just seems to dry out and it just looks like a dead twig, basically. Um, and I've even had success basically taking those what look like dead twigs, sticking them in the compost I've been using, and they have spread on occasion, so it does work quite well. So all I'm going to do with this, I'm just going to... I'm going to try and hit to bring it up a bit. Um, so the technique I, I watched online, basically the, the person, what they did was they took the cutting and then they split the stem. So I'm going to take a nice clean knife and I'm going to go about halfway across the cut the stem itself and I'm just going to split it up for about, you know, this is about an inch and a half. I'm going to probably do it for a, a little bit under halfway. So just carefully... Obviously, minding your fingers while doing this, just slide that up there. Now, what this is doing is it's giving more area for roots to start forming in. Um, if we just cut it at the bottom there, we've got a relatively small area where roots will start to grow from. Whereas if we actually split it like this, the roots can actually start to grow from within all that cut area there. Now, the other thing I do is I rotate the stalk by 90 degrees, and then I don't cut a complete slot up it. But what I do is I slice the outer, uh, almost like bark, of the stem. Um, 
I'll do it again on the other side. And then what we can do is we can actually split that outer away from the actual stem itself. Um, I'll just do it where I've cut it. You see there, I basically I'm lifting just the outer of the stem away. I'll just sort of do that all the way around. Again, it's just increasing the area from which roots will actually start to grow. Now, one problem with this is that um, if you leave it like that, as you can see there, the, the cut I've made has now closed back up again. So we actually want to keep that open. So what I do for this is I tend to take a little bit of sphagnum moss, um, just sort of nip a bit of it off, fold it over, and then I just sort of carefully sort of, well, I was gonna say carefully ram it up the end, but ramming doesn't sound particularly careful, but it does sort of do the job. So um, just gently open it up and split it. I'll just carefully push that in there. And that, as you can see, has just kept the stem open there. Now, the technique I'd seen for actually doing it this way, um, basically what they then did was they took this and they wrapped it in sphagnum moss and they put it in a pot and that's what the medium they used was. Um, now, I have done that and the first few I did that worked quite well, I, I followed that technique really closely. I got some sphagnum moss, I wrapped it all up and it was okay. It worked in terms of rooting very successfully, but then when it came to actually um, picking them out and actually then growing them on once the roots had formed, it was a real pain to pick the sphagnum moss from around the roots. Um, now, the reason I tried to pick a lot of it out was that you know these things take quite a while to actually root. Um, the sphagnum can um, turn into quite a mush and it keeps the roots really quite wet. Um, and actually, I prefer to put my Mepenthes in a much more open compost. Um, so I don't actually use live sphagnum moss. I know a lot of people do, but I've got one which basically uses things like a very small amount of peat, um, orchid bark. Um, it has a little bit of dead chopped up sphagnum moss um, and perlite in it. So it's a nice open compost that doesn't leave the roots all really wet and damp. Um, so that was the reason why I adopted the different potting medium for or rooting medium for actually doing this rather than the sphagnum moss because it was just really difficult to pick out those very very delicate black roots that come when it actually does uh, actually root. So what I use now actually is perlite. I've had great success with just using plain perlite. Um, it's quite nice in that uh, like sphagnum moss it doesn't really um, it you know, almost inhibits growth of uh, sort of mould and things like that, slime mould, all those sort of things that you can sometimes get on the surface of compost when you've actually got cuttings in there. Um, and it, it's, it's nicely freely draining, um, but it holds enough water and moisture to keep you know, the cutting quite happy and actually allow it to, to root. Um, but with all the disadvantage, with all the removal of the disadvantages of trying to do it in normal compost. So this is what I use. So there I've just filled my, my recycled pot with some, uh, some perlite there. And this is actually perlite I've used for other rootings. But as you can see, it's still pretty clean, pretty good. Um, there's a few bits that got a little bit of green on um, from a little bit of... Uh, um, sort of green algae from the water because obviously you're using rainwater I collect rainwater off the roof of the house and you do get a little bit of algae coming into that um, but this does seem to um, work quite well now what I might need to do is actually just give this a bit of a damp this a bit just so it sticks together a bit so I can make the hole if you bear with me a minute. So I've just damped the perlite a bit, um, just because it makes it easier to actually form the hole to put the actual cutting in. I don't want to actually ram it through the perlite because the perlite is you know, fairly abrasive. Um, it's not something you want to be ramming into because it's potentially going to damage the ends. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to make a bit of a small hole there. Then I'm going to carefully put 
my uh, cutting into there. I'm going to bury it fairly deep, um, almost up to the next leaf node. Um, that's where I'm hoping it's actually going to root from. Um, or sorry, that's where I hope it's going to sprout from. I mean, it should root along the actual bottom we've cut. So I really like it to uh, sort of grow from that second or that first leaf cut, first leaf bud up. Um, this one down here rather than this one. It doesn't matter if it grows from that one. It just means that you've got a bit of a, a, a dead looking stalk when it starts to grow. And it's not quite as nice um, in terms of the final plant. So there you go. That is now just gently pressed in there. I'll give that a thorough water and I'll put that on um, a windowsill. Now, some of the first ones I did, I actually put them in propagators. Um, so I put it in the propagator, which I actually kept in my greenhouse um, over the summer into actually autumn. Um, now, I didn't want to get these things too hot. Um, they can get scorched as adult plants um, with too much direct sun. So actually, I put the propagator underneath my bench staging. Um, so it was warm during the day. Got a little bit chilly towards the nights, but that doesn't seem to cause them a problem. But it got a little bit of sun, but it kept the moisture, the humidity up. Um, now, subsequent ones, I've actually um, done the same, potted them up, but then I've actually just had them on a windowsill. Um, I haven't even bagged them to keep the humidity up. I mean, you can do if you want to, and it will probably help. But I've actually found for this, this particular one and uh, Nepenthes alata, it doesn't seem to mind. You know, it, it will quite happily root in you know, fairly normal conditions, nothing special, doesn't need a lot of humidity. Um, so yeah, give it a go. Um, like I say, I've had, you know, so 89% success rate on the actual cuttings on this one. Um, so there you go, that is um, how it sort of looks. Um, I'll now put that to one side and um, hopefully within, and this does vary, you know, it'll be from, you know, maybe a month or two, maybe to even three, four months, you might start to get some roots growing. Now, usually I just keep these things, I, I just leave them alone, I keep them moist, uh, water, make sure they've, they don't dry out, um, and then just leave them until you actually start to get some growth. Um, you actually got to start to get uh, a sprout coming out from um, one of the leaf nodes. When it starts with that, again, I just let it do it. I, I wait until actually it's quite a decent size maybe, one, two inches long at least with a with a decent sized leaf that's come out of there before I'm tempted then to carefully pick away into the actual perlite to see if it's actually rooted. Because um, obviously at that early stage, yeah, these things can actually grow for quite a bit without actually putting any significant roots out. And the early roots are, like I say, very, very delicate. So you don't want to be breaking them off by hooking them out of the compost to find there's not really many roots there and then putting it back again. Um, so that I'll put to one side. Um, now I might pause a moment and I'll actually go and get a uh, an Nepenthes alata that I've actually got in that compost or in, in the perlite mix, um, which I'll show you just knocking it out and show you actually how well it does actually work in that. Um, if you just bear with me. Okay, and I'm back now. So this is uh, a Nepenthes alata, which I... Uh, put in here. I, 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 must, I don't remember when I put it in. I didn't actually put the date on the pot and I should really do that so I know how long these things take. Um, but as you can see here it's now spread to a decent sized little thing. I mean this is probably a couple of inches at least, maybe two and a half inches the actual thing. It's it's not a great uh, specimen. Um, it's, it's, I mean it will grow no problem at all. Um, it's a little bit scraggy um, but you know It'll show the point of actually undoing this, and I'll, I'll show you what it's like in you know, your compost. So what I tend to do is um, I'll find a, well, I'll use this tray. So what you want to start to do is just sort of gently ease the actual perlite. So don't try and pull it out. Um, you know, the perlite does pack down a bit, and it will, you know, the cutting will not pull out without breaking the roots. So what I do is I just gently. Uh, I put my tweezers down here, quite sharp, you can use a, a sharp stick or some of that, and I'm just trying to just loosen the perlite. Um, I'm not trying to actually at this stage dig the, uh, the cutting out. So once you've done that, let's just give it a bit of water. Once you've done that, you can then just literally tap the pot. 
and just let let the comp let the perlite just fall out from around the actual roots rather than trying to dig it out or pull it out just you know, like I say just let it come out of its own accord and then gradually you'll get to a point where it is completely loose and it'll come out what you can see there hopefully is some little black roots and you know, it's quite easy to very carefully either wash off or just pick off some of the bits of perlite. I mean, I, I don't mind there being some perlite on this because like I say, the compost mix I use when I'm gonna actually pot these up um, will have perlite in it. So having a little bit extra perlite is not a problem. And like I say, it doesn't go all manky like sphagnum can um, and start to sort of rot. So there, which hopefully you can see, are some really nice little black roots. Now they are very very delicate, you do have to be very careful with these. Uh, there's another one there. And some nice little roots there. Okay, up here. Um, so yeah, that's a really nice cutting we've got there. Uh, nice roots on it. And that I can now pot up in uh, the compost I would normally use. Um, I just grab a bit of that, I can show you what that looks like. So like I say, the mix I use is, there's a little bit of peat in there, um, there's some orchid bark, um, there's some bits of just dried chopped side of the moss, um, and there's perlite in there as well. Um, I find this works very really nicely. It doesn't sort of ball up and uh, you know, make form a, a tight mass. It keeps a nice open uh, sort of mix for the plants. It's not sat in water, but there's enough water retaining um, in this to actually provide it with all the, you know, just to make sure it doesn't actually dry out. So that, that's actually the mix I use. Um, I hope that was hope that was helpful. I hope that might um, prove useful for anybody out there that wants to uh, take some cuttings of Nepenthes. I shall now trim this up a bit, so I'll take that bit of dead leaf off there. Um, what I'll probably do this is because it's actually on this one, it's it's spattered out from fairly high up. I should probably bury this uh, stem quite deep in the actual pot, and we should hopefully get some more roots coming up here. Um, so. Like I say, I hope that you find that useful. Um, if you did, do give me a, a like and maybe subscribe to the channel. Um, if you have any other techniques for rooting the penthes, then you know, let me know. Um, especially if you know, if uh, you, you know you have different methods that are yeah you know, maybe 100% successful, I might try those. But otherwise, yeah, thank you for watching, and I hope you found that useful.